Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you may or may not know, I just came back from Japan several weeks ago and I went to visit a whole bunch of places in Japan, but the biggest highlight for me was visiting the Mazda factory in Hofu, Japan, about an hour away from Hiroshima where Mazda head office is located. And I said in my previous video that based on my experience working as an automotive engineer, I felt that Mazda factory is the most agile and the flexible system in the world and it's often overlooked by consumers but honestly Mazda makes some of the best cars in the world in terms of quality, engineering and production capability and capacity. I really do think that Mazda now has the most advanced manufacturing technique because they have ability to produce any number of different type of cars and models in the same factory or even across different factories and that is something that even Toyota has not figured out yet. Now if you haven't seen my previous video that I did on the Mazda factory, please take a look at that one first because I explain in great detail what the Mazda production system is. But for now, what I'm going to do is take you back to the time when I finally had a chance to spend some time with the plant manager at Hofu factory in Japan. And I asked him a whole bunch of questions to do with Mazda's production system and what makes it unique and what makes it so good. So let me take you right to the interview where I'm going to explain to you in English about what makes Mazda system so amazing and so impressive. Let's get right into it. Everyone, I am super excited to be here because I'm sitting across from a plant manager who is in charge of the Mazda manufacturing. Um, Suihiro san or Mr. Suihiro is in responsible for all kinds of things to do with Mazda, and we are very excited to have the chance to actually sit down with uh, with the gentleman who has so much knowledge and wisdom. I'm going to be interviewing him uh, both in English and Japanese, so we'll be going back and forth. I apologize for that in advance, but I'm going to ask the questions in Japanese. He'll reply in Japanese, and I'll respond back in English. So hopefully you're going to learn something about what makes Mazda unique and different in terms of their capability for production and manufacturing stuff. So that's all the thing that we're going to talk about. Let's get right into it. So one of the first questions I have for um, Suihiro san is what makes Mazda's production philosophy different from let's say someone like Toyota who is already established as a high volume manufacturer and what he said is well first of all uh, they have, there's a different environment because Toyota produces high volume products many products of the same type whereas Mazda being a more of a, a bit of a niche player in some ways has to be able to produce different models and also be able to accommodate uh, change in volume based on demand. So Mazda wants to be more flexible because they have to be in many ways. And they have a, a plant in Hiroshima, not too far away from here, as well as this plant here, which is the Hofu plant. And between those two plants, they have to produce multiple types of products. And when the demand changes, they have to be able to go back and forth and be able to bring the models either to Hiroshima or, to, or to over to here, Whole Food, and still be able to accommodate the demand. So that's something that is unique to Mazda in terms of need. And so what they've done is to produce the concept of horizontal swinging. And that means, really literally means, to be able to uh, do sharing of the models among the two factories. And that philosophy really dictates the approach that Mazda takes, and which is quite different from Toyota's. So the horizontal swinging, as they call it, or sharing of the models among the factories, the reason why that is so important, once again, is to be able to deal with the fluctuations in production and demand from customers. So if the Mazda CX-5 production goes up or down, or Mazda 3 production goes up and down, then they want to be able to move the models from one factory to the next factory and back and forth. Once again, this is something unique to Mazda, the most manufacturers wouldn't do it this way, including Toyota, because moving model from one plant to the next plant requires tremendous amount of re-engineering and moving of the equipment. But here, because the system is completely flexible, they're able to swing back and forth, which is one of the key strengths of their manufacturing system. So one of the really interesting questions that many of you guys are asking is to do with the supply chain, specifically to do with uh, chips, because the shortage of chips so many of the manufacturers are being affected because they can't deliver the products due to shortages. So my question to uh, suihiro san is, what is happening in the supply chain and would this improve over the course of the next 12 months or so? Because that is what everyone is asking. 
and is it really going to change for the better conditions? And his answer to this is a couple of things. One is that they are redesigning the product so that instead of using a dedicated chip for a particular component, they're going to use more of a universal chip that is more of a common and standardized component so that you don't have to rely on the dedicated chips, which is very difficult to get sometimes. So one is redesigning of the product that utilizes more common parts and more common chips to make it easier to source them from the very beginning. But also they're working directly with the chip manufacturers through the procurement system to do a more uh, accurate forecasting as well as to improve the entire supply chain and that will also improve. So the combination of many things will result in significantly improved um, uh, chip condition. I think he said within 12 months or so. In fact, he's confident that by summer next year, we might not even have problem with uh, chip supply shortages and the customers will be able to um, buy cars when they want it. Uh, but those are some of the promises that's happening. One of the other very interesting questions I ask is why does Mazda spend so much energy and time to get the body integrity and the body alignment so accurate? Because I said many times over and over again that I believe that Mazda's body integrity and the panel fit and alignment is some of the best in the world. And in fact, I can measure it because the, the gap is about three millimeters, some, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a bit more, but substantially better than most other manufacturers even when I compare it to Toyota, who tends to have about 4 to 4.5 millimeters in terms of gap. Now, this might not mean a whole lot to you because we're just talking about a millimeter or so difference, but to go from, let's say, 4 millimeters to 3 millimeters requires substantial dedication and commitment to get that manufacturing correctly done. And so my question to the plant manager is, why would Mazda spend all this time and effort to get just the right amount of alignment and the fit uh, when other manufacturers maybe don't care as much. And his response is interesting and very fascinating because he said that it goes back to understanding the vision and the philosophy of what Mazda stands for. And what he said is the Kodo design, which is a Japanese word that's a little bit difficult to translate in English, but really the focus is that they want the whole appearance to have that uh, almost a look and feel of a cheetah as, a, as, as an animal, so very graceful lines, muscular lines, beautiful um, body shape that um, provides beauty from all different angles. And in order to bring the, the beauty from design stage onto the consumer's hand, they have to make sure that every lines are tight, the body panels are fit well, and there isn't a large gap because that will give that kind of a cheetah look and feel because the whole thing looks more integrated. And so he said the entire company, every worker understands the significance and the meaning behind the Kodo design to make everything look accurate, precise, and just right. And that's why they spend so much time to get to this point of manufacturing, which I respect highly because so many manufacturers do not pay attention to this level the way Mazda does. Another question that I'm asking is a little bit tricky and uh, it's an interesting one for me as an engineer. It's to do with uh, how the emerging trends in technology may impact manufacturing in the future. So that includes IoT, which is Internet of Things, or other upcoming things such as agile thinking and so forth. So uh, my question is, is that something Mazda is taking into consideration and would there be more of this? And uh, Suhiro san's response is that, first of all, digital transformation uh, or IoT and that kind of stuff is critical to future manufacturing because it allows for two-way communication between the equipment and process and uh, outside that process. So something as simple as torquing a, a, a nut and bolt to a certain degree of standard, if it's not done right, you want to know right away. And through real-time communication between the equipment and the process, they can, for example, not only measure the torque rating that was done for each of the bolt, but also keep the record as a digital data so that should there be a problem in the future, they can actually show exactly which boat of the product has been torqued to what degree. So this kind of um, data mining or data collection is the future manufacturing. And uh, Suhiro san said this is not only happening right now, but more of this will happen in the future because they are fully embracing digital transformation 
And we all know that is going to change the face of the manufacturing in the future. This is a very important question I asked suedo san as a plant manager, which is to simply describe to us what exactly is Master Production System, or MPS for short. And he said that it's based on two very important pillars. Uh, one is uh, just on time, and one is called Master Value Balancing. Now he's uh, using the term just on time versus just in time because there's subtle but very important difference. Just in time means that there's sufficient parts when you need it at the production site to be used for the model, uh, but it might be sitting there for a few minutes longer than it needs to be. And it might also arrive in small batch form. But just on time is literally one part is being delivered to the production location at the exact moment when it's needed. So basically, you need the part here at exact time, you install that or implement that onto the model, and then the, it goes to the next station. So it is even more accurate and more precise than just in time. So that's one of the pillars. The other one is called the master value balancing, and that is to reduce all kinds of waste uh, to do with production and processes. And there are three Japanese words that describe some of those things such as unevenness and unnecessary waste. And they systematically approach this so that all forms of waste is reduced in all areas. And this is an ongoing, continuous achievement, not a one-time thing. And as they go after reducing the waste in all areas, then they will achieve higher and higher manufacturing excellence. And those two things describe the most important part of master production system. So thank you so much for watching this long but very important video. We're very thankful that you watched this video because it points out the key difference between master's production system from others because I truly believe, especially after touring the manufacturing facility, that they do indeed have the best manufacturing system in the world and it's very evident in their products. So I hope you learned something from our video. There's a lot more to come your way. I'm signing off for now, but until next time, we'll see you later. いいですね。はい、ありがとうございます。すいませんでした。ズームイン。